up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our Christopher Nolan preparation marathon with the fourth film on his roster, and it's one of his lesser thought of films. It's The Prestige. It's actually true. When you think about Christopher Nolan, you don't exactly think about The Prestige. You think about Memento, Inception, Interstellar, maybe the Dark Knight trilogy. And the more he makes these massively impactful films, the more certain films like The Prestige are kind of buried and all but forgotten. But if you've seen it, it is kind of hard to forget, as there's a certain level of brilliance attached to it. I mean, when you think about movies centered on magic, this has got to be the best that exists, right? You got this, you got Edward Norton's Illusionist, which came out the same year as this, and then there's also Now You See Me, all movies about magic, but this one is kind of insane. So let's talk about this film with a couple of experts in legerdemain, and let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, legerdemain. Sleight of hand. The Prestige follows around two magicians, once allies turn foes thanks to a tragic event that affected them both differently. Each man constantly works to one-up the other in proving that they're the better magician. Everything changes when Hugh Jackman's character runs into Nikola Tesla, who vows to create the perfect machine for magicians. This film truly stands out as most likely the best magic film ever created for a variety of reasons, and when I went through my rating model, I have basically print out an overall report which tells me what individual things are good or bad and what categories are as a whole perfect or terrible. And it received one perfectly scored category, the writing category, which goes over the dialogue, the balance or pacing of the film, the depth of the story, its originality, and how interesting the concept is. Every one of these subcategories stands out as either something impressive or something they focus pretty heavily on, which should be given credit. Breaking these down even further, the dialogue stands out for two reasons, because it's narrated by both Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale at certain points, and narration to me is clearly heavy focus on dialogue, and there's also, as usual, some really good speech moments from Michael Caine. As far as the balance of pacing goes, this is a film that slowly builds, tensions rise, situations get more and more dire until a point where the climax actually blows your mind. As far as story depth goes, this is a multifaceted film that's about a lot of different stuff, including a really in-depth look at what obsession does to people and the lengths they go to achieve what they need to achieve. It's about contention and rivalry against two people that used to be friends and how their history together fuels that hatred further. It's even about things that I can't talk about because spoilers. Originality, I mean, honestly, I can't think of a movie or story that feels similar, which is pretty typical for Christopher Nolan. And uh, interesting concept, duh, 10 out of 10. Now, even though the writing was the only perfect category, other categories got pretty close to perfection too, like BTS or behind the scenes, which looks at visuals, cinematography, editing, advertising, and the music or sound. In this scenario, everything got glowing remarks other than the music or sound, which to me was just fine. But everything else got perfect because it might pale in comparison to some of Nolan's later works, but even the subtle nature of the visuals and cinematography, they do stand out to me as very good. There is imagery in this film, especially one of the opening shots of the movie with countless top hats that are seared into my memory. That goes into visuals and cinematography, because with visuals, you're talking about a bit of production design, a bit of costume, a little bit of hair, which takes you into the past where this takes place. With the cinematography, you're talking about actual use of camera work that extends that uneasy, mysterious feeling that the film elicits. Editing-wise, this is a film that is expertly edited out of sequence to the point where the audience might not fully be aware of when certain scenes are taking place, but the more the film plays out, the more they really start to piece together how it all works in an honestly masterful way. BTS gets 9 out of 10. I'd say that those were the two best categories in my rating model. The rest of the categories are also pretty good, but have slightly more problems. The people category goes over the acting, characters, casting, individual importance of each character, and everybody's chemistry together. What stood out the most here was individual importance of the characters and their chemistry together. The chemistry is good because of that hidden and not so hidden contempt that the two characters have against each other, which grows and festers into something really dark and unstable. The individual importance is something that I can't really talk about because it's one of the spoiler things. Everybody's there for a reason, we'll just say that. Everything else in the people category got good 
but not perfect scores because let's be honest, you're going to remember this movie more for the story, more for the tricks, the illusions, than you'll actually remember it for the characters, for Christian Bale or Hugh Jackman's casting. I mean, they actually kind of blend in together when you think about it because they're both magicians, they both hate each other, they're both kind of doing the same thing and trying to one-up the other. I really liked the inclusion of Nikola Tesla, though. I thought that was something that really made this film its own thing. But he's the only character that stands out as something that you'll remember about the film. Also, the acting is very good, but nobody's gonna win awards for it. So people got 17 out of 20. The narrative arc category got 8 out of 10 because all things considered, the movie mostly opened up with a bang, or in other terms, it opened up on the inciting incident. And from there, through flashbacks, you get the introduction, which is fine, but I prefer to have a good introduction that gets you acquainted with the characters, the atmosphere of the film, and kind of just hints at what's to come. This just opens up with a bang, ultimately leaving me to think that there's really not much of an introduction. There is everything else though. Each character is trying to do something specific and because of that, they have obstacles. And because of their contention and that balance of the film, things escalate to the point of an insane climax. The narrative arc is done pretty well here. Now before we look at my bias categories like entertainment and specialty, our unbiased scores amounted to an unbiased score of 88% because it really is done very very well from a technical vantage point. But let's go ahead and look at the entertainment score. Entertainment looks at rewatchability, how much of a good time you have while watching, your impulse to buy or own the film, your impulse to talk about it or recommend it to others, and how engaging the film is, which basically means that if you pause it or look away, do you feel like you'll miss something vital in the film? Now, I will not waste too much time here. Just know that Yes, this is a pretty good addition to Christopher Nolan's filmography. It makes you think quite a bit, and the editing really makes it feel like you can't look away, and I definitely think that it has a decent rewatchability factor. So this is 8 out of 10. The specialty category for The Prestige, what do you expect from it? You expect a certain level of brilliance because it was Christopher Nolan. And because it centers on magic, I'm sure you want something, you know, magical. Both of these got perfect remarks because even though this is a lesser known Christopher Nolan film, it shouldn't be. It still works incredibly well and makes me wonder why, I don't know, Nolan never worked with Hugh Jackman again. As a magic film, I've said it a couple times already that this stands out as one of the, if not the, best magic films ever made. I also included my old score as a specialty category, and the number floating around in my head while watching this film was that it deserved a score of 9 out of 10. So I added that, and as always, halfway decent. Did they make the film that they intended to make? And if they didn't, I'd be shocked that they ran into this level of brilliance by accident. 10 out of 10 here. The specialty category got 39 out of 40. So those two categories creates the bias score, which when added up and averaged out comes to 94%, which is a bit higher than that unbiased score of 88%, and the final score for the movie averages these two scores together to 91%, 91 out of 100 possible stars, granting the prestige with a letter grade of A-. See, that 9 out of 10 number that I had floating in my head, that was pretty darn close. Let me know your thoughts on the prestige in the comments down below. Do you think that this is the best magic film to ever be released? and if not, let me know what you think is. The next Nolan film I'll be looking at is The Dark Knight, and I'm really looking forward to that. Make sure that you don't miss out. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with that. I'm also looking at a number of other marathons in the meantime, so you can check those out as well. And until then, peace out!